Hi, Los Folks Sharp. Today is September 19th, 2019. So it's 9-19-19. And um, I have been getting moved all day, feeling the woe of the things coming. And I'll tell you how, let me tell you how things started. I went to sleep and I just popped out of my sleep, got moved to look at the clock. It was one, two, four, seven. And I knew that God was speaking to me. I knew something was, he had something to say, but I didn't get anything. So I was like, okay, what does you want to say to me, father? I, I didn't get a prophetic thing at that point. So I just kept feeling to go to the Bible. So he said, oh, I'll turn to the page one, two, four in my Bible. One, two, four, seven in my Bible. So as I took my Bible, I, I took the Bible. All right. I have this King James and I just opened it up and I opened up to Daniel. So, so, okay. And I was right around the one, two, four page area. I think I had to turn like a couple pages and I was at the one, two, four, seven. And when I opened up to the one, two, four, seven, I read where it's the part in Daniel where it talks about Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharson. And where the writing was on the wall and basically God sending judgment. So a while back I had received a prophetic word with those words in it. So let me just throw it back out what's going on here. All right, it, it says the interpretation of Mene means God has numbered thy kingdom and has finished it. In other words, judgment was falling. Tekel meant thou art weighed in the balance and art found and are found wanting. That's the scales, the tipping of the scales, and they're going to be found wanting. This is America, the world. We're going to be found wanting because the crash is happening. Perez. That's the Euphorison part. Thy kingdom is divided, and we are most definitely divided in this land, and given to the Medes and the Persians. And that's Iran at this point, um, which obviously is things going on in the news about Iran right now too. So God is showing me in this that um, things are going down. And then I, I flipped open to 1248, which is the next page, and that's about Daniel in the lion's den which is exactly was in the prophecy. God talking about Daniel in the lion's den yesterday when I put the prophetic word out. So God is like showing us things here. This is going out as like a bulletin. It's going to be short to the point. So that's what I got. Then I um, laid there for a while. I couldn't sleep and I was praying. I, I couldn't get Henry Groover off my mind. All night, Henry Groover just kept popping into my mind, popping into my mind. Keep him in prayer. He's very, very ill. He has cancer everywhere. He's a saint of God. And um, Jesus told him he was going to heal him and use him. But there's two ways of being healed. We either go home or we get healed here. So keep him in serious prayer for God's will to be done, the Father's will to be done. So... The man is suffering right now, all right? So keep the man in prayer. He's been, a, he's been a, a man of God for many, many years. He's gone through to hell and back, basically. So keep that man in prayer. So I, I couldn't get him off my mind. I just kept praying, Father, your will be done. Your will be done in Jesus' name. So then that, that was going on. And I just kept feeling like a heaviness, a heaviness, a heaviness. I didn't understand why am I feeling this heaviness. It's like I could feel this woe. The woe is coming. So I get up in the morning and Gary, Gary was up. But he came back in the room. He says, I have something I have to share with you. He says, what's today's date? I said, 9, 1919. He goes, yes. And what t date was the Pope elected? I said, 3, 13, 13. He goes, Yes. And what's the difference between those numbers? And I said, whoa, six, six, six. It's six years since then. And the dates, it's six, six, six. I was like, wow, that's something significant going on today. So that popped into us, what was going on there. And pretty much the whole day I was in serious prayer and just feeling the heaviness of everything going on out there. 
And I went in finally before, and I just sat there and said, okay, Father, what, what is it you have to say to me? Now, yesterday he was telling me about some volcanoes that are going to go off, and I'll put that all together at the end. But he said this to me. Eve, the evil one is celebrating his rise in the world today. Today. And you can feel the oppressiveness of it, Lois. That's what he was telling me. Our country has strayed just like Israel did. And judgment is coming on the land. That's what I got. Okay? Then he started showing me some things that are going to come on the earth, our land. One thing he said to me, and this he, this he said to me yesterday, I kept getting Krakatoa, Krakatoa, Krakatoa. And then I'd be busy doing something, Krakatoa, Krakatoa, Krakatoa. Krakatoa is going to blow, he said. Mount Vesuvius is going to blow. Mount St. Helens is going to let off major steam. And he said, Mount Rainier is going to spew lava. That's just the wording that I got, okay? We already know about California. He's already talked about Los Angeles. He didn't say anything about that, but that's something that's been out there. We already know the earthquakes are going to happen there. So that's another thing to be uh, aware of. Then I was sitting there and I saw Tokyo. I was like walking in the streets of Tokyo and I saw the people and I saw the streets cracking, just splitting and splitting apart with an earthquake. So Tokyo is going to get hit with an earthquake where the streets are going to be cracking. I saw that clear. Then I saw a heavy blizzard, a major blizzard. And he said this to me, record-breaking blizzard is coming to New York City. It's going to paralyze the city. That's what I got, and I saw major snow coming down. And I went back and I checked out some of the horror, some of the um, blizzards that happened. And um, I think the highest amount that ever hit New York City was 26 inches, 26 point something inches. And other areas around it got like 60 inches. So if this blizzard comes to New York City, the areas around are probably going to get hit too. Well, they will get hit too. Obviously, not just going to hit New York City, but. So there's going to be a major blizzard that breaks the New York City record of the amount of snow. So I got that. Then he reiterated again, there's going to be a hurricane that's going to slam the East Coast. Many cities will be affected by it. Major flooding and winds that it's going to rip off the roofs. It's going to be a record breaker, he told me. He said that to me. And then he said this to me. Why will you not listen to your father? who loves you. Blessings or cursings, your choice. The laws of your land affect you all, even my people. You need to claim back your country. Speak out. Swarm the White House to stop abortions completely. The longer you allow Satan in, the longer you will suffer. Rebuke evil. Stand together in prayer, united, for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what I got. Actually, and that, that um, record-breaking snow actually was in uh, 212 of 2006. It was 26.9 inches in New York City and 60 inches other places. It was a record-breaker. This is a bulletin because it's going out fast. I'm doing this late tonight. It's going to go out quickly because it's going to be short and to the point. You see, I have a volcano behind me. Actually, this is Krakatoa, right, Gary? Yeah. He's okay. He's pointing his finger up. I don't know. That means, yeah, Krakatoa. So, um, I don't know. He just starts, he shows me these things. He shows me these things. Um, he's showing me again right now cornfields. Cornfields are going to be attacked by bugs, by floods. Our food sources are going to be attacked. The crashes, we already know about the crash. He's talked about it 50 million times. He's not warning about the crash anymore. He's not warning about it. It's, it's as if it already happened because it's in the process of happening. 
The shelves are going to be empty. I'm, Gary and I have both seen in our mind's eye the shelves empty in the stores because everybody's going to be a rush on to get food because people are going to panic. Everybody's going to buy as much as they can and not be thinking of the other guy. They're not going to care about their neighbor. They're going to just care about themselves. It's going to be a time of chaos. Chaos. And it's all because we refuse to stop murdering the babies. Do you realize how simple it could be to overturn this? And we don't want to. You see, Congress doesn't want to. The Senate doesn't want to. The Democrats don't want to. They want to allow these things to happen, and they don't realize they're slapping God in the face. I don't care, Democrat, Republican, um, anybody that has no name, whatever you want to be, you know, you don't want to be Democrat or Republican, you know, independents, they call them. It doesn't matter what you are. You can't disobey God. It's that simple. Oh, oh, you can, but there are consequences. This country is having consequences because in 1973, we legally allowed abortions. How in the world did we ever allow that to happen? Who? came up with it. The allowing of murdering of babies. We know that the, it becomes a baby after nine months in the womb. So it's not like we didn't know this. If it becomes a baby, then I guess it's a baby, isn't it? We can't say it's not. We know what something becomes. Then it's going to become that. That's why we're going to become like Jesus. We're predestined to be conformed into the image of Jesus. Which means that's what we're going to become. So we can't point and judge and put, point fingers at each other because we haven't arrived yet. Because we are in the process of being birthed as the church of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are being birthed as the bride of Yeshua. We're in the process of it. So we can't judge somebody because maybe they're at the beginning stages and they haven't yet been perfected. We have to allow it to take its course. Just like we have to allow a pregnancy, the gestation of the nine-month time frame for the baby to be born. And we don't have the right anywhere along the line to say, no, I'm going to stop this process. The process should have never been should have never begun, let's put it that way. If you don't want to have a baby, then don't do the thing that makes the baby come into existence. Use something to prevent it from happening. Not after it happens, go and murder the baby. These are abominations. God is very, very serious. And this is a bulletin going out. These things are going to happen. These things are coming upon the United States of America. And not only the United States of America, everywhere else. Canada's going to get slammed. Ireland's going to get slammed. Every country that's allowing abortions is going to go through a lot. God's judgment is coming. Cities are going to have judgment fall upon them. Individual cities are going to have his wrath pour down on them. Los Angeles, he said it over and over again, is done. A major, a major quake, some kind of a quake is going to knock it off its feet. California is going to get hit with these earthquakes because California is extremely liberal. New York City is, well, New York State is extremely liberal. These places are going to be hit by the wrath of God. That's why God's going to send us into safe areas where we'll be protected from all of that. That's why we're building safe zones. So I'm letting this go out because it's going to be fast to the point. There's a lot more that's going to be happening. When he gives them to me, I'll put them out. But as of now, that's what he's showing me. I don't see anything else. I see a lot of major flooding happening. Um, and, and I see deaths because of it. People are going to drown. Some of these hurricanes that are going to hit, you're not going to listen again like you didn't with Katrina. And, and people are going to die because of it. If we don't start listening to the words of the prophets of God, we're going to suffer consequences. We're going to suffer because of it.
because those speaking for the Father, are, uh, they, we put out words of warning, we put out words of what to do to be safe from it. The time will come when he will send you to the safe zones. It's not the time yet, so don't go into panic mode. We're not ready yet, and if it was the time, we'd be ready. But we could be way more ahead if people would believe it. Most of you think you're getting out of here, pre-tribbers, mid-tribbers. You think you're leaving the planet. But as time escalates, you'll see that that's not a truth. After the tribulation of the day, Matthew 24, after the tribulation of that day, you look up and you see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the sky. And then things happen. Then it says the angels gather the elect. The angels gather the elect from the four corners and we go up and meet them in the air. So, you know, the abomination of desolation takes place first. And then he goes after the Jewish people and he says he goes after the Christians. But the major stuff is going on over there where the Antichrist is going to dwell. And if America comes back to God, we'll have some form of safety in our country from a lot of that lot that's going to go down. Because our president is trying to make America a safe haven into itself. He's making us self-sufficient. We're not going to have to depend on anybody. He's looking to keep us protected that way. But there's one thing missing, and that's following the laws of God. If we can do that, if we can override these, these laws that are sin in the sight of God, then the blessings can come back. And I do believe that that will happen to America at some point. But until then, Christians and those that are not Christians are all involved in this country. So the judgment is coming on the land. And God has showed me that it happens for all of us. But he will lead us to places where we're going to be safe when things get really, really bad. But the, 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 the woe of the economic crash that's going to happen is going to affect everybody. Even if you have money, it's still going to affect you if you have to wait online for gas and you can't get gas. So there's things that are going to affect us all. So I'm most going to show up and make sure you pray, pray, pray. And pray for Henry Groover. Pray. Pray for, the, pray for all of us. Pray for one another. Pray for our president to get it. To get it that we have to be blessed by God. We have to override this abomination in his sight. You can't be blessed and murder your neighbor. You just can't. You'll end up in jail, first of all. But for some reason, we've, we've allowed the murdering in the womb. It just sounds, it's just warped. It's reprobate, it really is. So we have to pray that that gets realized, the severity of it, so that we can come back and be blessed again. So we'll see how things play out. Don't underestimate the power of God and don't underestimate the power of God's people. Rise up, my children, he says. Rise up. Speak loud and clear. Make your will known to the Congress, to the Senate, to the President. Don't remain silent. Because the reason um, abortion came and, and into the first place was because we didn't say a word. We shut our mouths and we kept quiet. And Satan just walked right in. We have to throw them out in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. And I'll be back when he sends me back again. Have a blessed day.